So these five books have undoubtedly changed the way that I think and operate in my daily life. And the knowledge that I have gained from these books have absolutely helped me get to another level, both personally and business-wise. So welcome to the video. My name is Tyler Clare, owner of TJL Training out in Lowell, Mass. And today I'm gonna to be talking about five books that I have read this year that have absolutely changed the way that I think and operate on a daily basis. So my goal with this video is to give you my major takeaways and learning points from each five books so you guys can take some of the knowledge that I have gained through these books from this video straight into your daily life so you guys can hopefully see an improvement in your day-to-day -day life. So let's get into it. So the first book that I'm gonna be talking about is Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. So this is absolutely one of my favorite books, not only that I read this year, but all time as well. So I highly recommend you guys read it. But one of the major takeaways from that book is that all success is preceded by failure, meaning it's inevitable that you're going to have to fail usually a lot before you reach that success. And usually it gets the hardest right before you have your major breakout, right? So kind of that three feet from gold analogy where when you reach a failure or you reach adversity, that's when you need to push through and all successful people have seen failure after failure after failure and the ability to continue to move forward is what makes successful people successful. There's a great quote that I love from this book that says every adversity brings with it the seed of an equivalent advantage. So every failure that you have, if you look at it and you take something away, can bring something as equally advantageous to the table if you're able to look at your failure, examine it and take something away from it and continue to move forward. So this is just a very small part of the book and a lot of the book is extremely valuable if you guys read it. Um, so I highly suggest that you do, but this is kind of one of the major takeaways. So definitely just something to think about and keep in the back of your head from a day-to-day -day basis as you guys are moving forward in whatever it is that you guys are doing. So the next book is The Almanac of Naval Ravikant. So this is a fantastic book in terms of money, in terms of spirituality, in terms of happiness. So I'm gonna give you guys three different takeaways from kind of each section of the book. The first one is you will not get rich renting out your time. And if you wanna get rich, you have to own equity or part of a business. You guys can look at pretty much any of the super wealthy or just real wealthy people in general and they own equity or they own part of a business. And with this is the statement that just hard work alone is not going to make you successful or make you wealthy, right? There's people that work 80 hours a week every single week and they're still broke. And there's people that work 20 hours a week and they're rich. So it's all about outputs, it's not necessarily inputs. The, what you guys produce is more important than how hard you work and how much time you put into something. So it's all about just leveraging your time efficiently and smart to really get those outputs that you're looking for to get rich, to get wealthy. And you're not going to do it by renting out your time per hour. So that was kind of a major shift mentally that I made when I read this book about a year ago and absolutely helped me think just a little bit differently. So the next takeaway that I took from this book was from the happiness section. And this was talking about the biggest mistakes that humans make is that thinking that something external down the road is what's going to make them happy. And in reality, happiness is more of an internal circumstance. The decision to be happy, the decision to make whatever situation you have the best it possibly can. And this comes down to that life is the way it is, right? Things are not internally good or bad, but our thinking makes each one of those circumstances the way that it is. You can take any situation and find some positive in it or just shift your mindset to just be a little bit happier than you would be if you were thinking negatively, right? So it's all about our thought process and how we look at things that determines what makes us happy and what doesn't. And we should not rely on external things to make us happy. And the last major takeaway from this book is that if you have to think about it, the answer is no. Whether it's in business, whether it's life, whatever it is, right? If you have to think about it, the answer is most likely probably no. Oh, should I do this or should I go here? If you have to think about it, the answer is probably no. And that's just something you should really think about on a day-to-day -day basis. And that kind of should steer your decision-making in the right direction keeping that in mind. So the next book that I read is Who Not How. And the whole premise of this book is that as humans and the way that society is set up, we're taught to do everything ourselves, to shoulder everything on our own, right? If you're in school and you try to ask somebody for help, it's usually considered cheating. But in the real world, you need to rely on other people. You need to ask for help. You need to have other people helping you on a daily basis. So what we tend to do is, okay, we have a problem. How do we do this? And we try to do it all ourselves when in reality, we should simply be asking the question, who can help me do this, right? So no matter what it is that you wanna do in life, you're only gonna get so far by yourself. Now, when you can think like this and think of, okay, how am I gonna do this? No, no, no. Who am I going to get to help me get there? 
Who am I going to seek out for knowledge or who am I going to partner with on this to help me move in that direction? Again, if we're trying to do everything ourselves, we can only go so far. But when we can include people that are not only as smart as us, but better than us, that's when we can really hit new levels. So if we're trying to do everything by ourselves, it's going to be a very slow, methodical growth. But every new level you want to get to is going to require another who, right? Another person that is an expert in whatever field that it is that you guys are trying to get after. And if you want to take big leaps, right? If you want to 10X whatever it is that you're doing, you're going to need to find other people to help you get there, right? Again, we tend to just think in a very linear manner, okay, it's very step by step by step. But in reality, if we can find the right who, we can take massive leaps within our life. And it just comes from that simple shift of thinking, who can I have to help me? Who can I partner with? Who can I learn from in this area to help me make a big stride and trying to think of, okay, how can I do this? And then trying to do everything ourselves. So a major mistake that a lot of business owners do, right? They want all the control. They want to do everything themselves. But in reality, we need to let go of some of that control, partner with other people, find other people to help us so we can take massive strides in the direction that we want to go. And that's the quickest way to lose your money and not be rich. So the next book that I read that I absolutely loved was The Psychology of Money. And one of the main premises of this book is that just knowledge about money is not enough. Knowing how to make a lot of money is not enough. A large part of getting rich or getting wealthy comes down to the psychology of it, your behaviors, your emotions, when it comes to spending, investing your money. So what you see a lot of people do is they try to spend their money to look rich and in turn that causes them to not be rich. And a lot of that comes down to the emotional aspect. They're trying to impress other people. They're trying to keep up with the Joneses and things like that. And that causes them to not get rich. And another example that they have in this book is that most Americans don't have $400 for an emergency in case it comes up. But those same percentage of Americans also spend on average $400 on lottery tickets a year. So that's where that $400 goes. It's not that they don't make enough money or they don't know how to make money. It's their emotional aspect behind the money. They're spending money on things that they don't need. And there's a whole lot of other aspects psychologically that go into this, but that is definitely something that you need to think about. It's not just the knowledge you have of money or how to make money. It's about how to keep it, how to invest it, and how to be smart emotionally. So the next major takeaway that I absolutely love from this book is that a small percentage of the things that you do can account for a large portion of your winnings. So you do not need to be right more than 50% of the time to be successful in investing. You really only need to be successful maybe a handful of times. As long as those things win so big, it cancels everything else out. But the major asterisk to this is that the times that you're wrong cannot wipe you out. One of the biggest things in investing is compounding interest. So if it wipes you out, you stop that compounding interest. You no longer can play the game, right? So a small portion of the things that you do are going to account for a large portion of what you guys are successful with. So think about Bitcoin, right? You can have 100 different investments. 90 of them go absolutely terrible. And your Bitcoin investment could pay off so big. Say you invested in 2011, 2012. It doesn't matter what those other investments did because one of them paid off so big. This can be true with a lot of other things, right? Say you got into real estate right when the housing market crashed and you're able to buy a bunch of different things at a low price. That one action, that one time frame, can pay off so big for you that everything else that you did before or even after that doesn't really matter. So it's not about being right 50 or 60% of the time. It's just being right with the right things and then not allowing anything else to wipe you out so you no longer can play the game of investing and take advantage of that compounding interest. And the next book that I read that kind of ties into that was The Compounding Effect. This is pretty much just saying that even just 1% better every single day over time is going to pay off huge. And the other thing is that we're either getting 1% better or 1% worse and every small action that we do is either taking us towards that 1% better or to that 1% worse per day. So really it just goes into depth about small, smart choices plus consistency is where we're going to get success. So even all your overnight successes, a lot of it was the small choices day to day built up over time that allowed them to take that huge jump and be successful, quote unquote, overnight. So in reality, our daily habits are the things that are going to carry us in that direction of either 1% worse or 1% better per day. And we need to make sure that we're being accountable for those habits that are going to lead us in one direction or the other. So if you really want to make a change in your life, you need to change something in your life, which could be your habits. What habit are you doing that's either taking you in this direction or taking you in this direction? And then just shifting those habits. It doesn't need to be anything crazy. You don't need to take huge leaps every single day, 
but as long as you're taking and moving in the right direction every single day, slowly over time, making those small, smart choices on a daily basis over time, you're bound to be successful. So really when you take that thought process into account that all real things that are great in life are a cause and effect of the compounding effect, right? 1% better over time is going to lead to huge results down the road and you don't need to try to aim to hit a home run every single day, but just get to first base for that one day and then okay, get to second. And then over time you do that for three, five, 10, 20 years, you're bound to be successful as long as you're making the right choice is on a day-to-day -day basis and you have the right habits and you're moving in the right direction over time it's bound to pay off so kind of rambled kind of was all over the place but those are just some takeaways from all of these books again highly recommend that you guys read these books yourselves doesn't matter what you do you're going to take value from each of these books it's going to change the way you think you operate on a daily basis so i hope you guys enjoyed it I hope you guys took some value if you guys like the video drop a comment hit the subscribe button really appreciate it so we'll see you guys in another video soon